So where we are right now used to be by Nicholas' time the church, okay, from the 1100s, okay. But of course, without any of this decoration, the frescoes that we see right now. Era un eremo, questi erano eremiti, non c'era la chiesa, la città di Tolentino era fuori, qui eravamo in campagna. Okay. È vero che la chiesa era dedicata a San Giorgio? Sì. Ok, so by time of Nicholas the church was dedicated to San Giorgio and this area that today belongs to the city by the time was countryside, so it was completely outside from the city and they were eremites. Padre mi interessa, queste erano chiese dedicate a San Giorgio, erano il gruppo dei brettinesi che dopo sono, hanno formato insieme ad altri gruppi l'ordine agostiniano. Brettinesi, chiamati i frati brettinesi. Ok, so brettinesi, he's saying that the friars living here were brettinesi, so were the ones that uh, joined the other ones, they formed the Agostinian. Because was the Pope by then that yes, there were, there were different, right, there were different congregations of the order uh, following the rule of St. Augustine and the Pope brought them all together in what we call the Grand Union. So this was this belonged to one of those congregations. Alla sua morte Nicola era venerato come santo e l'hanno posto qui al centro, non portato al cimitero, ma posto qui al centro coperto con un'urna di legno, la prima, dai pochi toccavano la cassa, avevano altri benefici. Ok, so when Nicholas died, he was immediately put in here in the center of the church, uh, where today we have this, but by the time his casket was made of wood, and there were some holes, like for instance, the one that we can see that, of course, this is not original from that time, but just to say that people could touch the tomb of St. Nicholas, and people started to say that they received graces coming here, praying to St. Nicholas, so for the intercession of St. Nicholas. Nicola è morto 1305, 40 anni dopo, 1345, entrano qui di notte e rubano le ossa delle braccia, il furto delle reliquie succedeva alla spesa, oh, okay. erano ossa, mi staccano. Ok, so, uh, as you probably remember, Nicholas died in 1305, 40 years later, some people entered here in the church and they stole the bones of the arms of St. Nicholas, okay? He's saying that this was very common during that time. Queste vanno via con queste ossa, dalle ossa esce il sangue, e questo è il miracolo, hanno paura che riportano indietro. So the ones that stole the, the bones, the arm bones of Nicholas, so that, that happens a miracle, because from the bones, comes out blood, and they got fear of that, so they decide to return here to the church and give back the belt of St. Nicholas. I frati al mattino seppelliscono per evitare nuove furti sotto il pavimento, il corpo senza le braccia. Okay, so it's uh, the, because of all of this is when they decided to bury it. Uh, St. Nicholas' body, but without the arms that have been stolen. Quando recupera, dopo un po' di giorni, recuperano queste braccia, fanno quei reliquiari che abbiamo visto sotto a forma di quando, e qui a destra era la sacrestia, fu chiamata Cappella delle Sante Braccia. Okay, okay, so do you remember downstairs I told you they have two silver reliquiaries around the arms? So it's because of this. So they buried uh, the body of St. Nicholas, and finally, when people, um, the ones that had stole, returned with the arms, they decided to do the reliquaries that we saw with silver, and they used to be next to the church so people could see those. That's why we have those from the 1300s. Dopo 600 anni, 1930, riesumano il corpo, fanno la cripta e le braccia le portano. So, uh, it was only in the 1900s when they decided to come out with the body again, and so it was when they decided to do the crypto, where today we have the body, and where today we can see also the silver and the, the re re reliquaries of St. Nicholas, like we saw 
today. I have a question. Yes. You told us that St. Nicholas is one of St. Rita's favorite patron saints. Yes, she had three. Could you ask him why? Why? Sapete che Santa Rita a lei piaceva tanto San Nicola? C'è si sa qualche cosa? Era il primo santo dell'ordine agostiniano, come agostiniana e dopo. Might be because he was the first one becoming also saint in the Augustinian order, and it was so, yeah, even during her life, but was the first one. So could be because of that, and also because being not far away from. La fama di santità di Nicola si continuava a ingrandire, molte persone, tra cui Santa Rita, che non era santa, non era ancora monaca, si rivolgevano ai santi. E anche perché lui era così famoso, lui era così famoso anche durante il tempo di Rita, quindi tutti qui in regione si venivano qui per pregare a San Nicola, quindi lui era molto molto famoso durante la vita di Santa Rita. I don't think so. Sapete se Rita è mai stata qui? No, no, no. Solo è andata a Roma per la comunicazione. So, no, the only thing we know is Rita went to Rome to see the canonization of St. Nicholas. Piccolo particolare, se conoscono Santa Chiara da Montefalco, era un'altra santa come Santa Rita Agostiniana, era contemporanea. Lei viveva a Montefalco in Umbria, lui viveva qui. Però non si sono mai conosciuti. Ok, he is saying about Saint Clara of Montefalco that we will visit uh, in a few days. So she lived during the same time of Saint Nicholas, but they never met each other. And one important connection between Rita and him is the Augustinian life. The Augustinian exactly, life. exactly. What, that was why when she reviewed the Augustinian friars and sisters there, that would have connected her to any Augustinian particularly this one, because he was just recently canonized, so and he was the first in our order to be officially canonized. Qui inizia la storia di Nicola. So here in this lower part we have Nicola's story that starts right here. So has uh, uh, abbiamo già parlato un po'. So what represents here is the parents of San Nicola and they had this desire to have a son. Vanno a Bari, pregare, quindi questo qui San Nicola di Bari. Ok, so it represents when they went to the shard of San Nicolas of Bari. Nicola che va a scuola, idealmente va a scuola da Agostino, senza Agostino. Ah, subito, da piccola, da piccolo. Idealmente, Agostino era morto otto secoli prima. Ah, ma qui è rappresentato se non sotto Agostino. Ok, so here Nicola ascolta la predica di Agostiniano alla vocazione alla vita religiosa. Ok, e lui era quando era a parlare di una preghiera agostiniana e era chiamato le persone e diceva a loro, per favore, guardate se Dio ti chiama per questa vita religiosa. Come Agostino ascoltava Ambrogio, si è coperto dal cristianesimo, anche Nicola, in parallelo c'è la vita di Nicola, la vita di Agostino. Come Agostino ascoltava Ambrogio a Milano, si convertì al cristianesimo. Ah, perché è contemporanea a Santo Ambrogio? No. no. Agostino sì, Agostino sì. Agostino sì, Santa però qua no. cosa c'entra con San Nicola? Eh, non capisco. Perché eh, Nicola è un agostiniano, come sì. la vita del fondatore, la vita del nuovo, del nuovo santo agostiniano. Ok, so he starts to to learn a lot about uh, St. Agostine's uh, life as well. Come Agostino, tornato in Africa, inizia la sua vita religiosa, anche Nicola, verso i 15 anni, entra nei frati. Okay, so what they are doing is to com compare the St. Agostine's life with St. Nicola's life. So if you remember St. Agostine, he decided to go back to Africa, and in this case they compare it with Finally, later uh, to the Agostine's uh, order. Chi gli interessa l'altro, vedi i volti di 
questi personaggi, le mani così lunghe, le aureole sopra elevate, le aureole sì. sono proprio di fronte. Oh, ok, quindi, so, uh, against the comparison with Giotto and how we can see, even he didn't work Mine here, but was his work, his school, with the hands, bigger hands, and also this uh, part that comes out from the, the wall. This, let's say, is the Giotto signature, even this was a student. Nicola riceve una corona, un premio, il suo premio erano le grazie che riceveva per il popolo. Ok, so here is like he's receiving this crown for the angel. It was like to say, uh, giving him a prize um, for all the, the people he helped to. Vedi, fai notare il volto di San Nicola è molto bello. Ok, he is uh, uh, calling us to look carefully the face of San Nicolas, how beautiful it is, because we are speaking about 700 years ago. Lì è la morte di Nicola. Okay, here is the present when San Nicolas dies. Okay, so again, as I, I said there, del sole, la gente viene qui per venerare il corpo, i soldati li facevano entrare un po' per volta, mentre aspettavano fuori, tutti vedono quella luce che è okay. la stella. Ok, so about the light that we speak, we spoke earlier in the crypta, so it's also represented here the miracle. So we have to imagine there were the guards here, many people outside uh, trying to come inside and see St. Nicholas' body. And while they were waiting outside was the moment that finally they saw this light for the very first time. This light that St. Nicholas saw for the last three years of his life. And then we have some miracles. Okay, okay. So this represents uh, a woman. She was married and she was really, really sick. And people decided to bring her here to stay close and touch St. Nicholas' tomb. And without any explanation, she became Since she was born blind, she couldn't see, and again she came here, and the miracle just happened. She could see. Okay. So um, this man was killed by the kidnapped and uh, the, the relatives prayed to St. Nicholas and where the, the people that have kidnapped him were sleeping, he was able to escape. Una nave durante la tempesta, alcuni pregano e si salva. Okay, so here uh, represents a storm and the sailors and the navigators, they started to pray also to St. Nicholas and they were saved. Un innocente accusato di omicidio lo volevano impiccare, pregando Nicola si scopre che innocente si salva. Ok, e in questo caso per questo personaggio è un innocente che è stato convicto di death penalty e non ha fatto niente di wrong, è stato innocente e di nuovo hanno pregato a San Nicola e è stato salvato. Qui è un riassunto dei tanti miracoli, come Gesù nel Vangelo guariva i ciechi, con gli occhi chiusi, lo storto, il punto di lettrosi. Così i santi, in questo caso Nicola, sono persone che hanno una fede così forte che operano questa cosa. Ok, so what the represents here is like to resume all of this. What it means? You know, several people here that was say killed and what they are trying to say is Jesus did all those miracles during his life. And saints, because they have the strong faith, they uh, could do 
un'altra interpretazione. L'edificio rappresenta la chiesa, la malattia rappresenta il peccato. Se okay. noi siamo nella chiesa, veniamo guariti da questa malattia che è il peccato. Ok, ok. So, just another interpretation of this fresco is, if you look to the building, it represents the church and people inside, they are uh, with disease, they represent evil, that our sins. So what represents us at the same time is, we have sins, but if we attend the church, we will be uh, saved. La malattia è come un peccato e yeah. il sacramento, la confessione, l'eucaristia, il battesimo, so la medicina che ci guarisce. All the sacraments are the drugs and will save us.